Greetings everybody, Redbeard here for the July 27th, 2016 edition of the Midweek Update. If you missed Raw this week, you likely didn't hear the announcement that there's going to be a universal title in WWE. This is actually just a segue to The Miz starring in Alien vs. Predator 3. Number 5 story of the week is that Brock Lesnar will not face discipline from WWE over his doping violations that were handled in UFC. This is a kind of crazy story, to be honest with you, because of the fact that it has ramifications that could definitely put some very harsh light on WWE and the wellness policy as it relates to their talent. It's come out through a WWE spokesperson that Lesnar will not face any type of discipline or sanctions from the company. This is kind of in light of what's happened here recently and in the past with a number of superstars, Roman Reigns included. Um, the biggest thing here to really set everybody on their ear is the fact that Lesnar is recognized as a part-time employee, not a full-time competitor, and because of that, he evidently does not fall under the wellness policy guidelines. This is something that I've never heard of until now, and that really has kind of changed my opinion of the wellness policy as a whole, because you would think that this is in place to protect these guys from themselves in most circumstances, but if it's not going to apply to everyone, then why does it apply to anyone? You know, it's one of those deals where you have to think, okay, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. And in this case, it seems as though you've got a guy like Lesnar who's being treated differently than everyone else. But it also makes you wonder, well, who else falls into that category of a temporary employee or a part-time competitor? Um, definitely you would think someone like The Undertaker, um, possibly Chris Jericho. Um, just, you know, really, we don't know who it really applies to. Uh, and it... It's, it's unfortunate because it seems like a catch for a lot of the younger talent that they might, you know, inadvertently get something in their systems. But, you know, we've said before in regards to stories like this, these are athletes, they're all grown-ups, they're responsible for what they ingest ultimately. But at the same time, this should not be a uh, policy that gets enforced unfairly. It should be enforced across the board to everyone. Talent, office staff, whole nine yards there. But. Uh, we're still waiting to see what UFC and the MMA world does with Brock Lesnar, but it uh, doesn't seem as though his professional wrestling career is getting derailed anytime soon. Number four story of the week is that Jake Manning has won the PWX world title. This is a special moment because of the fact that I think this is the first match in 200 and some odd days, maybe a couple of years, I don't remember how many um, actual performances it was, but uh, Jake made a comment on a, um, a Facebook post that this was a, the first win he'd had in a long time, and it felt good to not go under uh, for once in his uh, long career. Um, but uh, Jake has been a long-time um, member of the Carolina's independent scene. He came from the Midwest and you know, migrated down here. He's, of course, known for the uh, tremendous work he's done as part of the High Spots group there with the different... Uh, documentaries that he's been associated with, but also the, um, the fact that he's been with the various forms of PWX as long as I can remember, uh, back when it was CWA, for example. Um, he was with them then. He was, of course, a member of the tag team, the infamous icons with uh, um, uh, Joey Sylvia. I almost forgot his name, but uh, just some great body of work from Jake, and it's great that he's able to have it be recognized. and even better for it to take place on a big stage like this particular show here. It uh, happened this past weekend at the Club Escapade. This was PWX's another level event, and for uh, what we've been told, we weren't able to be there, unfortunately, but from what we've been told, it was definitely a show that was on a, another level, appropriately named. <laughs> but uh, the match itself was said to be tremendous. Uh, they apparently involved everything from chairs, tables, thumbtacks, you name it, in that uh, contest there. It opens up a wide-reaching set of possibilities for where they're going to go creatively in the future. Uh, it does appear from what happened earlier on in that card that Cedric Alexander will possibly be challenging him at the next PWX show, which I believe is the 21st. Yes, I'm referring to my notes here, but it'll be the 21st of August. Also at Club Escapade in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, this brings up other ramifications because of the fact that there are some other things we're going to talk about in this uh, iteration of our show that could be involving Cedric Alexander and how much longer he has to be a member of our local scene here. But I uh, also want to bring up the fact that, of course, Jake won the title from 
John Schuyler, the Southern Savior. A lot has been talked about in terms of his future. Is he headed to NXT? Is he just headed to somewhere else, period? We don't know. Um, he's not really made too much in terms of public statements. He did show up to the ring uh, this past Sunday wearing an NXT, or at least bringing an NXT t-shirt with him. So we'll have to see what uh, he's got going on there. But definitely a lot of interesting stuff happening around PWX. And definitely want to congratulate Jake Payne once again on his big win and getting that championship. Number three story of the week has to do with the talent involved in the WWE Cruiserweight Classic and their future as it relates to the company and elsewhere. This is a tremendous gathering of talent. We'll go ahead and say that uh, we can't really gush enough about the Cruiserweight Classic. Um, it's been a great program to watch. Uh, very well done from top to bottom, from the announcing all the way, of course, to the in-ring product. Um, but we've gotten a bit of an impression of what's going to be happening to some of these guys, at least, as it relates to not only the Cruiserweight Classic, but also the um, expectation for what these guys are going to be doing here in the future. Short term, it looks as though a lot of these guys are, of course, going to be at the top of a lot of independent cards. Uh, one of those is going to be the King of Trios tournament. There's actually already been selected a Team CWC, um, which is going to consist of Drew Gulak, uh, Cedric Alexander, and Johnny Gargano. And they're going to be uh, competing in Chikara's King of Trios 2016. That will be taking place later this year, I believe, up in Philadelphia. Uh, beyond that, we have also learned that a lot of these guys, uh, and then we're talking about the top tier of the uh, competition, pretty much everyone who made it through the first round, it seems, or at least the uh, top guys there in. Um, have all been offered uh, contracts by WWE. This shouldn't be surprising, um, in certain circumstances anyway, but also because of the fact that uh, you've got the Cruiserweight division, which is going to be a featured aspect of Monday Night Raw moving forward here. Uh, expecting that to be a big move once the Cruiserweight Classic is actually done. Um, but for the time being, it looks as though we've got guys like Cedric Alexander, Graham Metallic, uh, Akira Tozawa, Kota Ibushi, uh, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, uh, a number of others have all apparently been offered contracts and they're expected to come on board down in Orlando sometime between September and October. One name that we've been reading about that's been absent from some of these lists is Zack Sabre Jr. Um, some of the dirt sheets online are reporting that it's a possibility he's got some type of a personal obligation that's going to prevent him from signing immediately, but it is expected that he's going to come on board sometime around starting next year. And that, of course, is a big get for the company as well because he's regarded as one of the top in the world in terms of juniors, cruiserweights, whatever you want to call them. But uh, yeah, definitely looks as though the rich are continuing to get richer because not only does this mean that these guys are going to be out of the independent scene, out of Ring of Honor, but also, of course, out of the grasps of TNA. Yeah. All this stuff is strategic. I'm telling you right now, folks, there is a stranglehold on the industry as it relates to talent, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, because guess what? The best want to work with the best, and that's what's happening right now in WWE. Number two story of the week is a very serious one, and it's a lawsuit that's been brought about by a number of former talents to WWE regarding traumatic brain injury. This essentially is the same type of lawsuit that former NFL players brought against the league here a couple of years ago in that they're more or less saying that uh, the company did not provide them a safe work environment by not disclosing to them the real uh, dangers of things like concussions. Now, this is a story that you can read one of two ways. With the NFL lawsuits, those guys, you know, you're playing a game where it's not necessary that you're necessarily, excuse me, where you're not necessarily going to be pounding your head against something all the time. You're wearing helmets, you're wearing pads. You expect a certain level of protection, but injuries happen. Concussions in a sport like that, of course, are very rampant. Uh, the difference in that in professional wrestling, of course, is the fact that with wrestling, you're more or less being asked to land on your head at any given point in time. It just sort of is the nature of the thing. Of course, there are ways of protecting yourself, there are ways of taking um, falls that uh, you can hopefully avoid that type of injury, but be that as it may, it's still a real possibility that on any given night, anybody who goes in that ring could get a severe head injury. 
Um, apparently, this was something that was never really discussed or disclosed with the company, or as excuse me, that the company discussed with talent, and that may have inadvertently wound up making the company prone to saying, "Okay, well, you're all right. Go ahead and go out there and compete anyway," even though you might have a guy who was severely dinged up in his squash. Um, then we've had a number of examples of that potentially affecting individuals. Um, you could go as deeply as you wanted to with this. Uh, you could talk about Chris Benoit. You could even talk about someone who's as recent in memory as CM Punk. Um, tons of guys could come forward in something like this. But you've got a list of respectable individuals, for the most part, and I'll say respectable, uh, who have been a part of this lawsuit and uh, looks to be going forward. So we'll have to look and see what happens with this in the future because it could definitely have a lot of ramifications on the company. And the number one story of the week is our reaction to Battleground, Raw, and SmackDown. Whew, a lot of wrestling so far this week. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about here in this segment as well, is whether or not a trio of days of WWE programming is really a good thing. Uh, but we'll start off by talking about Battleground. Tremendous show. Uh, there were only two moments of the entire thing that were a little bit weak, and that was, unfortunately, the United States and Intercontinental title matches. Um, the Intercontinental title match more so than the U.S. title match um, just because of the fact that the finish to the Intercontinental match really just seemed to have nothing there whatsoever. And it was almost an acknowledgement of, hey, we had these two guys in a feud, but they're going to be on different rosters moving forward, so they're going to appoint this anyway. Um, likewise, with Rusev and um, uh, Zack Ryder there, you had an opportunity for Mojo Raleigh to come down and sort of introduce himself. Um, as Rusev's next feud, possibly, but uh, ultimately just a pair of matches that had no bearing whatsoever on the future of the creative side of things. Um, other than that, though, the card was fantastic from top to bottom, or from top to bottom. You had, uh, of course, another great match turned in by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Uh, the women's tag team match was great, as you had Bailey making an appearance there. People came unglued whenever her little noodle guys, of course, went up in the entranceway. Um, just a, a great main event there uh, with Rollins and uh, Ambrose and Reigns. I think those three guys could have phenomenal matches for years to come in any form of that uh, trio there. Uh, but just a great, great pay-per-view, great show overall. Definitely worth your time if you've not checked it out yet. Uh, Raw Monday night, you know, if, if we had any preconceived notion that Raw might become a lesser entity in the grand scheme of things now that they've tried to sort of spread out the roster, yeah, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> because especially now that you can compare Raw to SmackDown, um, Raw definitely is the preeminent brand in um, regard to WWE. Uh, the gathering of talent they have there is top notch. Um, the fact that you've got Roman Reigns now essentially being, you know, still considered toward the top of the card, but definitely in the doghouse in terms of how he's being booked, um, is just crazy, <laughs> but it's, it's expected, but it's crazy. Um, Finn, Bal Finn Balor, um, in his debut on Raw, blew everybody away just as you would expect. Um, a lot of good stuff happening on Raw. Uh, it's going to continue to be a top-notch program, of course, as you expect it to be. Um, the, the weird thing, though, is that we were wondering forever in regard to the brand extension, what was going to happen with the championship picture. And, as we joked in the opening of this program, they're going to have a universal title, and it's going to be representative of Raw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know that there have been universal titles in wrestling before, but just the concept thereof is very weird and kind of stupid to me, because when you think of the titles in WWE, you have the world title, or what was the world title. You have um, the Intercontinental title. You have the United States title. Of course, at one point in time, we had a European title as well, but um, all those are representative of various geographic regions. Okay, Universal Champion, is he going to be fighting guys from Alpha Centauri 5? We're going to have some dude that looks like he's, you know, kindred to uh, Lieutenant Worf coming down and having matches. And just, you know, it's one of those things where you have to make fun of it because of the name. But uh, I, I hope that the belt actually looks like something that's decent and not some kind of strange hubcap tattoo whatever amalgamation but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is I hope it's a classy looking belt 
and not uh, some of these other crazy things that they brought out in the past. But uh, at any rate, uh, that's all we'll say about Raw for now. Uh, SmackDown was a different thing there. Um, I won't say it was a letdown because it did it, it seem that they're still trying to make strides in developing the new era talent, even though you have a guy like Dolph Ziggler who technically has been around for a while, becoming something of a focal point there on the first episode anyway, uh, post-brand extension. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of time, I think, for their brand to settle and to really see someone come to the top. Um, I think it's also going to take a lot of time for their announced team to get it together. Uh, those three guys there did not have any chemistry, especially Otunga. I, I don't know what he's really done to warrant his continued employment with the company, because he's not wrestled in a long time and suddenly he's a, an announcer. I, I don't think he's going to be really qualified for that, to be honest with you. But uh, they were stumbling over each other. I think ideally you would have... Mauro Ronaldo and JBL in that booth. Um, but I don't think you necessarily need a third man. You don't have to have color commentators both on the babyface and heel spectrum, in my opinion. But that's just me. I'm just a guy with a vlog and a camera. So, but uh, definitely gonna keep watching the shows. Um, even though I think on a week like this, where you had pay per view on Sunday, Raw on Monday, SmackDown, and potentially now you're talking about uh, oh, my lights going out here as I'm talking to you. And now you've got um, NXT and the Cruiserweight Classic here as well. So you're talking about four days worth of um, programming. That's a lot. And whether or not that's sustainable and whether or not people are willing to tune in that much, um, we'll have to see. What we'll also have to see is how the weekend events go. We've got a lot going on here again this weekend. There are 10 events that we know of in our part of the world. And hopefully, between the time that I show off these next posters and when you see me again on this program, I'll have some light. <laughs> so we'll I'll go ahead and roll those posters, show you what's happening in this part of the world, and we'll be back in a few moments. we're doing the closing all natural looks like my little stage light here might be kaput but at any rate if you're a wrestler a promoter or in some way involved with the wrestling promotion and you didn't see your poster as part of that last segment there it's because we didn't know about it we do our best to prove social media to keep abreast of what's happening in this part of the world but we do miss things that said if you would like to have your poster featured on this program or also on the wrestling with red beard facebook page please send us a line. You can contact us via YouTube, email, Facebook, Twitter, any of the popular platforms out there we have available for you to contact us. We do appreciate you guys tuning in. We will hopefully be making our way to the old school championship wrestling event that we advertise there in the poster segment. Hopefully going to have some match videos and whatnot to bring back with you, so that'll be something to look forward to next week. Appreciate you guys tuning in once again. If you enjoy the program, go ahead and click that like button. If you really enjoy what you've seen here today and also what we have on the channel, please go ahead and click subscribe. That will do us a world of favor in terms of getting our content out to you in a timely fashion. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week.